So today's topic was requested by Michael. He asked me to do a video for the Echo Powder Bottles. So let's get started on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Now I don't have one of these in my collection, so I'll be using pictures from the internet on this one. Now the bottle says Echo Hygienic Powder, EB Chemical Company. And I had to go check to see if that was the correct way to pronounce EB, and that's what all the websites said, so. And then we have Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and it says at the bottom, established 1864. Well, I eventually stumbled on the name Benjamin EB, so let's go. Benjamin Meyer EB was born in 1840 in Pennsylvania. His obituary says that his parents, John and Elizabeth, brought him to America when he was young. Benjamin was 20 years old in this 1860 census. Two years later, in 1862, Benjamin is in the Union Army. He spends about nine months there, and then he comes home. When he gets back, he marries Kate, and they have five kids. So 1864 is when he starts his business. Now, for whatever reason, he just does not show up in any city directories. I even tried looking in other cities. So the next census that we come to is 1870, and he's 30 now, and he's listed as a druggist. So he would have been in business now for about six years. We're now on to the 1900 census. He's 60 now, he's working as a druggist, his wife is working as a druggist clerk, and I learned that he had a pharmacy, and she's helping him run it. And he's got a few kids still living at home, and he's got one grandkid there, but the one that we're interested in is Benjamin Jr. He's about 29 years old, and he's already out on his own. And he's also a druggist. So moving on to 1910, the dad, Benjamin, dies this year. His obituary doesn't give much information about the business. It mainly sticks to his accomplishments, his personality, how kind he was. The only thing that it really says about his business is for many years and up until his death, Mr. Eby was engaged in the drug business in Newport and conducted the largest drugstore in the county. He had a wide acquaintance and was one of the best known men in this section of the state. So I have a feeling he was well known in his town, but that was about it. Now, if the dad, Benjamin, is the one who invented the powder, it's not mentioned anywhere. So we know EB Chemical Company was established around 1864, but the records eluded me until I finally seen something pop up in 1915. And we can see that Benjamin Jr. is running the company. In 1916, Benjamin Jr. dies at age 45. And this one is interesting. Toothbrush bristle in throat kills druggist. Dr. Eby, proprietor of the Eby Pharmacy and head of the Eby Chemical Company, so they actually show that there's two different entities there. He died from a hemorrhage at his home at noon today. A toothbrush bristle lodged in his throat after cleaning his teeth after dinner. He choked and struggled to get the bristle out of his throat when he was stricken with a hemorrhage. Now I have some very horrible images in my head right now. And we do see some really interesting ways to die on this channel, don't we? So real quick detour. The toothbrushes in 1916 were probably still made with some type of animal hair, usually hog hair bristles. These were made with horse hair. It was right around this time, World War I, that regular teeth brushing actually was advised. The military had to be taught good brushing habits, and by the 20s into the 30s, toothbrushes actually came into demand. The nylon brushes that we know now were not invented until 1938. And there's actually some places today that are still selling the more eco-friendly natural bamboo brushes with the hog hair bristles. So, Ben Sr. and Ben Jr. have died. Benjamin III shows up in the city directories as a real estate agent for a couple years. I would have thought that maybe his older brother John might have been the one that took over the company since he was the druggist, but Ben III's obituary confirms that he was the owner of EB Chemical Company when he died in 1967. By the way, Benjamin III also moved to Maryland and he met his wife there, but he still shows up in the Pennsylvania directories. So let's see if we can date some of these bottles. Now, the bottle says the company started in 1864, but we have no proof that the powder has even been around that long. 
So I decided to take a look decade by decade in the newspapers to see what I could find. Well, there's no newspapers at all in the 1900s. Then 1910s, there's a lot of ads for fire extinguishers. So I guess EB Chemical Company sold other things besides drugs. But there's no mention of the echo powder, so it's possible that this company was only selling stuff like this right now. The 1920s, there was no ads at all. All the 1930s ads are wanted ads recruiting sales ladies and managers to oversee the sales ladies. I remember those Avon sales ladies back 20, 30 years ago going door to door with their little samples. It sounds like they were kind of like that. And here's the obituary of such a sales lady, Elsie Trapnell, and she died in 1991. So these 1930s wanted ads were the first time that we see mention of the Echo Hygienic Powder. I didn't find any type of picture of the bottle though. I saw a report of the company getting sued back in 1942 for misbranding the product. They used to claim all these healing powers. And in 1944, they copyrighted the Echo Hygienic Powder. Also in 1944, I see the company was involved in a bowling league. So that's pretty cool. 1946 is the first picture that I find for this bottle. It claims that 1 million bottles have already been used. Okay, but let's look at the design on here. See the E has a squiggle over to the O? So 1950s are mostly wanted ads, and I thought it was funny that I just said that, and I happened to see an Avon sales lady ad here in 1950. Did you know Avon's been around that long? Here's a 1952 ad showing that same design. Now 1965 has an ad where it shows the E with a squiggle over here and then the E without the squiggle here in the same ad. So maybe this is a transition year. 1967 is when Benjamin III died. And unfortunately, I don't see what happens to the company after he died. And on Ancestry, the city directories for this city ends in 1949. There are two ads in the 1970s. Here's one in 1970 and then one in 1974, but no pictures. By the time I got to the 80s, I came across this article. It says, Echo was introduced in the late 20s and was popular for half a century. Demand declined and production ended in 1982. So there you have it. It took all the way to the end of the research to finally come up with some dates for it. <laughs> So according to this article though, Benjamin I or Benjamin II could not have invented the powder. Benjamin III was the only one living in the 1920s. So did he invent it or did his brother John, who was also a druggist, invent it? I couldn't tell you. There is one more design that I found online though, and that's this one. And I assume it's the last design, 70s, maybe 80s? And the address for the company is 316 Carlisle, and I'm not sure if it's still standing. See, 335 is this parking lot, 308 is that brick building right there, and it could be that building, and then 300 is the one down at the corner. And that's all I've got for today. If you have a request, just email me, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.